brand new open source wall mounted filament storage. And you can too. There you are, welcome back. Pooch is here, hey man. Hey, how's it going? It's going great, and, and here's why. Because these rollers in the rep box have been the actual bane of my existence. Ouch. And uh, no, I still love you, it's fine. <laughs> the problem is the way that you mount them in the rep box was a little bit questionable when it was over your head, which is how we have it in the new studio here. Yeah. And it makes it really difficult for even me, who's tall, to load a spool or multiple spools accurately. And so Pooch was coming up because we visited Protopost and I said, why don't you come by? Because I heard you had a new spool spinning solution for the rep box. Yeah, you're, you're not wrong. I like the sound of that. I agree with you. It has been the bane of my existence for much longer than yours, which is what led us to try to iterate. So loving continuous improvement, we'd like to try to keep improving our product. And uh, we came up with this new idea called the slip rod. Yeah, let's put it front and center because... Yeah, throw them here, just... Gone. The, the, the concept is really simple. So instead of uh, actually having a roller system for the flange, we have something now called the slip rod where we're actually embracing the fact that we've got this really slippery pet G tubing here that actually allows the flanges of a spool to spin really easily. Throw that on there. I see. It's a spin. And and so it's not, it's not bearing smooth, but there's enough slip for a 3D printer to grab the filament, no problem. Correct, and our testing procedure was, can an Ender 3 or a similar uh, extruder pull it with minimal effort? We have a little ribbing here just to keep it from wandering left to right. But the nice advantage is, is it's a no look, load and go system. Right, exactly, and which, which is where I had the pain points before. And you said these are, uh, this is PETG. Yeah which is nice and slick, especially it looks like, it, so everything is rolling with the layer lines. Yeah. These are vase mode, I would imagine. It is, it was done vase mode, yeah. We did it as a parametric model, so if somebody decided they wanted a different ribbing configuration or a different length, we just print them in these little segments and then they thread on to this pipe here. So it's a, a super simple design, but Perfect. It, it works great. We'll talk about the pipe. So these are actual, this is metal conduit. That's right metal here. conduit. That's a le very common in the US. So they call it EMT. Uh, it's electromechanical tubing, or I'm gonna get, somebody's gonna correct me. But basically it's commonly used in the electrical industry for running uh, wiring through. And it's very cheap and very ubiquitous. And the reason that we selected that is we wanted to go beyond the rep box with it. Well, so people with rep boxes like myself or others then, there is an upgrade path. Yes, yeah, we do have an upgrade kit for anybody that has a version 2.2 or newer box. Yes. It's simple, simple, simple. Couple uh, screws. Couple screws, it's take the side panels off, put the new side panels on that these uh, pipes just notch into, and uh, you're good to go. You put them back on, you're good to go. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. And then the parts here, these, don't go in the rep box. No, they don't. This was actually an enhancement. So we kind of took the idea of the uh, slip rod system and I said, well, I want to take this to the next level. So maybe you're not concerned about uh, uh, keeping it enclosed, but you've got a lot of filament. That I you have a store. lot of filament. You that have I do a need lot to store. of filament. And I've seen, I saw your episode where Courtney came out from Filament Stories and Bless her heart. Helped, helped organize all that. And I thought, that is awesome but we can do better. Challenge accepted. That's what I'm hoping to, to talk about today. So this uses our nice French cleat system. So you'll notice we've got our notching there so that uh, it's a modular design and you can run pipe and have as many of these brackets as you want. So you can make a nice long shelf of these and they suspend. Well, EMT is available, I know, in 10 foot sections. Yeah, yeah, I've and, seen six, eight, tens, sure. And French cleats, people have that run on their walls. I mean, just, Continuous. To you be know able how to much I, stuff. you do I love, love French, French cleats. I, I like that idea, but you've also included these. Yeah. So to try to make it as accessible as possible to as many people. Maybe you don't want to run long French cleats across your entire wall. I just did a printable version. This is all open source, uh, available at all the main, uh, you know, Prusa printers. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that kind of stuff. And uh, you can basically print and then just screw it to the wall wherever your studs are instead of having to run along strips, so, you know, options. That's really handy. What yeah, I like about this is uh, a lot of people might have filament samples around and you could actually utilize filament samples or small bits of filament to make these, yep. which are just gonna be functional in nature against the wall. Yes. Then these parts here, those look to be laser cut, but- They uh, are, but there's also a printable version of it that, see, that works really well uh, as well. We just happen to do a lot of laser cutting and so I can crank these out a bit, bit faster than we can print them. But if you wanna run them at home, again, you can go download them from 
from Thingiverse or Prusa Printers and, and uh, make your own. I like this idea because in the new studio, we do need a filament storage solution. Yeah, Courtney's do. solution is uh, no longer available because we're, we've moved out of that studio. New place. So this, this could be it. Do you think I have what it takes? I know you have what it takes. Safe travels, my friend. All right. You fly safe, I'm Good gonna get luck. to work. Go to it. Here it is, it's done. Four 10 foot filament storage shelves, thanks to Pooch, over at Repcord. Each shelf is gonna hold probably 40 to 45 different spools. I mean, have a look for yourself. You could probably just hit pause and count it. I've got some PLAs, I have some Peak, I have some Pet G, I have a bunch of Nebula right over there because uh, I, I bought a bunch of it for a project coming up. Some of it is color sorted, some of it is function sorted, some of it is just Matter Hackers Quantum right over there. I'm sure that this will evolve over time and this isn't going to be the finality of it because this is roughly half of the spools that I have here in the new studio and so filament will be stored in other places where there are printers. But Thanks for joining me on this journey, and I'm really excited to have this part of the move-in done. A big thanks to Pooch from Repcord for coming up here and upgrading my rep boxes and giving me the, uh, the inspiration to get my filament on the wall. All information on rep boxes and this open source filament storage solution will be in a link in the description. Thanks, GoPro. If you made this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more, fight for cause you believe in, store your filament on the wall, and as always, high five.